Hey everybody and welcome to the Vallejo Waterfront Weekend 2022. This is the first race of the day for the Labor Division, Insulators versus the Painters. And I am Sean Clark, member of Local 16, Journeyman Insulator. I was also a member of this uh, rowing team uh, prior to the lockdowns for five years straight. So the painters are on the, which is now you're going to be the far side of the screen, closest to the uh, ship in the back there. The insulators are rowing right in the front of the screen there with Mel Brashears steering the boat as the coxswain. Coxswain, coxswain, I think that's what, I can't remember which one it is. So Local 16 has been supporting the Vallejo Waterfront Weekend for the past 10 years, I believe. Um, that we've been putting boats uh, in the water and at least having one or two uh, boats in these races. So they're definitely fun. I didn't take any aerial shots, uh, bad on me, of the actual other events and activities and, and fair stuff. There's a car show that's happening uh, over to the right side over there as well. Um, I am Local 16's uh, self-appointed information officer. Just thought I'd throw that in there. As you can see, they're about two boat lengths ahead of the painters at this point. Uh, if you're looking for a career change or if you're looking for... Uh, a career in the building trades as an insulator check out uh, www.insulators16.org for information and sign up dates to start your career as an insulator and become a part of our apprenticeship program so this turn right here is what can either make or break a win or loss for a team right now I remember when I was on the team rowing and there'd be, a, there was a couple of races where we were actually losing going into that turn. But since we had done that turn so many times and had rowed together, uh, for so many races, uh, we nailed it and, and would pull out and kill it. Also your lane draw is very important. The closer you are, if you're in lane one, the closer to the wall is probably the better because you're out of the current. So when sometimes you'll see uh, races where there's five boats out there and the guy may in the furthest lane will uh, hit the turn first and he'll shoot directly over and try to cut people off and get to that uh, closest lane. So the uh, insulators won. Congratulations, uh, Mel and your team. Congratulations also to the painters uh, for your efforts as well. Stay tuned for the next race and a couple of interviews from some of the local 16 members uh, that I was able to get. Hi, Jeff. Hello. So Jeff Millar is one of our retirees and he comes down and helps out quite a bit with a lot of the different functions that we do. Jeff, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Today is a marvelous day, perfect weather, and it's good to be here. Absolutely, absolutely. So you're one of our retirees. How long have you been in the trade, Jeff? Or how long have you been in the organization? Just a little less than 60 years. 60 years, so how many of that was on the, on the tools? About 40. Wow, 40 years. That's a lot of time on the tools. And then you've been in, heavily involved in the union as far as the, the meetings go, uh, involved in the business part of the union as far as trustee, e-board, all that stuff. You've been on a few different things, correct? I've been on a few different things. Um, I pretty much make uh, the majority of union meetings uh, every year. It's been interesting. Um, the active components, uh, the active uh, people really take good care of the retirees. Uh, and and it's, it's 
it's very nice. It's, uh, everything I have uh, in my life has been because of the union. No, that's the HFI Local 16. Thank you, Jeff. We appreciate it. Hey, Josh. I'm good. How are you, brother? Good. Getting ready to tear this water up. Yeah. You gonna do? You gonna do? You gonna do the thing? Gonna do the thing. Do it yearly. So how many how many uh, years has this been for you that you've been doing this? Yeah, I'm not parenting. Yeah, I think it's about five years. And that's Luke over there, our other our other resident videographer. <laughs> yep, uh, Jonathan is on our other team. I was on the original team when we first started. Mm -hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. you were on the team too. Yep, yep. We were the original. We're the original uh, members, I believe, in Mel. Um, Shannon McKinney, yep. uh, Michael and Devin Greeny, yep. Kyle Kraft, Sean Clark, uh, Mel Brashears, myself, Josh Pereira, and I think that was it, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was it. But yeah, I mean, I, I did it for five years straight, and I think you may have. Did you do it for five years straight too, or did you take well, a break? Last year, because of the pandemic, we didn't do it. I didn't yeah. didn't do it. And the year before that, I think, because of the pandemic. Awesome, awesome. All right. Well, what, what would you say to somebody who's watching this? Because this will be on YouTube at some point. What would you say to somebody out there who's thinking about getting into a union or thinking about getting into the building trades? What advice would you have for them? Do it. It was the best decision I ever made. Fortunately, I'm a third generation, so I got to have available to me the lifestyle that I grew up in, and I wanted to make that available to my children. So it gave me a good lifestyle. It gave me good training. I was paid good, fair wages as I was being trained for my career. And now that I'm in the mechanic role and an instructor and a trustee and an executive board member, it, the more I put into the union, the more I get out of it for myself and my family. And as you can see, my daughter's here. My kids are always here. I want them to understand that value of being in a trade or a craft. <laughs> so this is the first time that, that, that we're trying this out as, uh, you know, covering some of these events for the, for the union. And Josh has been a very active member in the union. We both were at one point. You know, I think you and I have all, at one point we were neck and neck all the time for Activist of the Year awards, right? Yes. And that's, uh, that's something I, I encourage, especially apprentices. I've, I've gotten it quite a few times in a row, and I think the last time I was tied with somebody, and I actually requested them to uh, give it to somebody else. I've gotten it a bunch of times. And it, what I see is if they don't get it, it might discourage them the next year when everything comes up. I, I, I've already received my goals and stuff, so give it to the next person. And all I can say is, when you get involved in your union, you get more out of it than you ever did with just going to work every day. Because when you're informed, you're you're in the know, you're always participating in all the events, and it's good to go out and get to meet people. You get to meet politicians, congressmen, city council members, uh, school board members. And so it's a good environment. And like I said, I've always had my children involved in it. And matter of fact, my middle daughter is actually working for one of the people that we campaigned for right now this weekend, so she can't be here. So she's out working for uh, Angelique Ashby in Sacramento. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the one thing that I can say about being a, a union member... The one thing I can say about being a union member and a part of this local, local 16 in general, I don't know about any other unions and how they run and what their, what, you know, their culture is there, but I know that the culture in our union is these kind of events are all the time. We're constantly doing things. Now that, you know, all the restrictions are pretty much being lifted, we're going to go back to business as usual. And business as usual is teamwork, camaraderie building relationships um, you know trying to get together with your your union members your brothers and your sisters out here and trying to promote this way of life because it is a way of life and you know if you want to i wouldn't even say consider yourself middle class but i mean the path to the middle class was always through unionism and the building trades or some sort of organized labor 
So, I don't know, I see it coming back in a big way. You know, watch the news, you got Starbucks, you got Amazon, you've got also Home Depot, just, just got another 300 people where they're gonna try to organize one of their places. So, it's, it's awesome, it's a good time to be a union member. So thank you. Hold on, let's go around. There we go. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate your time. No problem. <laughs> you guys have a good one. Well, I'm gonna go say All right, now here's the rest of the this motley crew here. We've got good. We got Jonathan Blaine, who is our vice president of the union, and also he is a JATC coordinator, which is a part of the apprenticeship, right? Almost. I'm the yeah Assi no, assistant yeah. Assistant coordinator, right? Yeah, I'm the assistant coordinator okay. currently uh, at the apprenticeship. Uh, we actually have sign-ups October 10th between 9 and 2 at our uh, school and hall. Uh, that's coming right up. Uh, again, kind of probably things that other people have said. Uh, the more you get involved, it kind of brings you into getting involved with other things as well. Uh, I, I think that the, the union is a great place for somebody, especially not knowing what, what they want as far as a career path goes. Um, I think it's something that uh, it, it's a nice thing that's already set up for you, uh, and if you participate, it, it, it tends to pay dividends. You, you're an active member. You show up. Um, it's it's uh, like I said. It's it's hard to really explain unless you're a part of it. And uh, being a part of it, I would highly recommend for anybody getting interested in in a career, uh, get involved with the building trades. Um, we're one of those, so you know we, we're a little biased. So join the insulators. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, things like this, the, the rowing event, uh, I think that I've been involved with this for about six years. Um, I think I came out the first year thinking we were on those little skinny boats, and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to fit on there. I'm going to tip this thing over. <laughs> um, completely different. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a workout. Um, it's a lot of fun, and it brings a team together, a lot of camaraderie, um, and it's just something that I look forward to each year. I joke and say I'm going to punish myself whenever I go out and row, but... Uh, <laughs> Sometimes it feels that way, but it, it is something that, that I look forward to every year, for sure. Awesome, Jonathan. Yeah, I, I, this is where I got my start in the union as well. And, you know, it started here with the rowing team. It gave me the, it gave me what I, what, what I was missing, you know what I mean? It gave me that sense of camaraderie, teamwork, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? I felt like I belonged. You know, this is, you know, our thing, right? And so from that, it just built into a whole bunch of other stuff. And it's a great place to to make friends it's a great place to bring your family like over here i got my daughter who's hiding and and you know over there that's where my family is and we're just here to to have a good time and hopefully attract you guys out there you know to want to have and join this way of life so thank you yeah, jonathan absolutely. appreciate it no problem absolutely. All, right. all right welcome back race number two for the labor division the banging oars versus a chrysler group See how they inch forward to the starting line, trying to get as close as they can to each other, nose to nose, before they go ahead and call the uh, start sign. All right, looks like a good start for both teams, uh, as it looks like. I just want to thank uh, Josh Pereira, Jeff Millar, and uh, Jonathan Blaine for taking the time to uh, do some interviews for the local 16 members all right look at that these guys are neck and neck right now looking good look how they're in unison it's really really easy to get thrown off if you're not paying attention to what you're doing and if you're looking at the team next to you it's real easy to get to get thrown off and and out of sync with your with the guy in front of you so when you're rowing you you would think that it's very easy to stay in sync with uh, the person in front of you and, and those oars to be moving like the way that they are it's not easy at all it takes timing it takes paying attention to the person in front of you oftentimes when you're sliding back and forth on these pads you're getting jammed in the in the kidney or you know you get splashed with water because you know they the ore goes in at the wrong angle so there's a lot that goes into it it's not just you know getting in there and 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 rowing there's uh there's a method to the madness for sure oh looks like the chrysler group is inching ahead you see behind there on the waterfront 
that whole thing is filled with uh, different events, uh, dunk tanks, uh, the police departments out there, the fire department. Uh, like I said, Local 16 has been a part of uh, this event for about the last 10 years. And as I mentioned earlier in the first uh, race, I am Local 16's self-appointed information officer. I've been a Local 16 member for about 15 years now. All right, look at that. Now, like I said, remember, you can make or break yourself in one of these races right here at this uh, turn. So let's see how the Chrysler group does against the uh, insulators on this turn. Wow, they did really well. Look how fast they snapped out of that. All right, well, the Bangin' Oars have got their work cut out for them now if they want to win this race. They won the first one against the Painters. And we did get a different lane draw. And you can see that our coxswain is a little bit, is a different guy too. It's not Mel Bashir's. I've rode with this guy as my coxswain before. I can't remember what his name is, but he's a really good, uh, I, I actually liked having him uh, during our practices versus um, a couple of the other ones. Just I just like the way that he called things out better. All right, well, it looks like they're about a boat length ahead. They got the middle lane this time. So, and it's slack tied. I don't see the, uh, wow, a little, little spin circle there. Hope you don't have any balance issues watching that. All right, well, this is, this is something. Right about now, they've been they've been pushing pretty hard, trying to catch up with them. And I bet you their arms are burning, their legs are starting to burn, they're starting to run out of breath. All they want to do is just catch up and for this to end. They've got about maybe four boat lengths. Oh no, no! Look at look at they lost an oar. Oh my God, to the closest side to the uh, camera. The number two. He's trying to get his oar in. He can't get it in. He can't get it in. Oh, that's, uh, he is behind Devin Greeny. And I, I wanna, I'm gonna say that that's Luke Swoda. Like I said, it's real easy. I just mentioned that in the beginning of the, uh, of the race that it's really easy to lose your uh, train of thought and to uh, have that happen. They call that getting crabbed when the, uh, the ore pops out and you get kind of screwed. All right, well, it looks like the Chrysler Group won this, uh, this race. And it's a good time to mention again, if you're looking for a career uh, in the building trades as an insulator, to check out the insulators website, www.insulators16.org for information and sign updates. All right. The insulators won the labor division first place. And from here, we're off to celebrate at Zio Fredo's in Vallejo. The owner of that restaurant is also a Local 16 member. Thanks for watching the video. For more of my content, make sure to check out my YouTube channel. Nowhere to go but up. You can also check out my TikTok at Nowhere to Go But Up as well. All of the content was captured, created, and produced by Sean Clark. This is property of Nowhere to Go But Up LLC.